Hey guys, Will here. So believe it or not, it's been two years since we first set eyes upon the Fnatic CSL DD. Now, back at the time that we originally reviewed this product, it had a bit of a monopoly on the entry-level direct drive space. There really wasn't anything like it available, and uh, things have changed a lot since we did that review. We've seen the explosion of Mozza Racing, for one, and uh, we're definitely a lot more spoiled with abundance of choice now than we were when we originally checked out this product. Now, Fnatic have just dropped a bit of a bomb on the scene in the last week or so. They've dropped the price of their CSL DD ready to race uh, bundle for PC by a massive 150 US dollars, which gets you the wheelbase, a wheel and pedal. So pretty much everything you need to get up and racing for under, under $400 US, which is pretty darn amazing. So I thought today we would take a bit of a dive back into this, give you a look at exactly what you're getting for the money, compare it to some other alternatives at around this kind of price point too. But by the end of today's video, you'll have a good understanding of the options available in the entry level direct drive space and which one will hopefully suit your needs and budget best. So let's get started. Okay, so as always, before we kick off here, a couple of bits of important information for you to get the full context before we dive into today's video. So firstly, big thank you to all the manufacturers who have sent us their gear for us to check out in today's video. All the gear that you're gonna be seeing in today's video has been sent to us under the same conditions from their respective manufacturers so we can check them out and make content for you guys. So big thank you to them for that. Now, if you do decide you wanna pick up any of the gear that you see in today's video, uh, regardless of the brand, we've got some affiliate links down in the description below. Those are an awesome way of helping support our work here at Boosted Media. At no additional cost to you guys if you find what we do here beneficial. If not, that is absolutely fine too. Just jump on the manufacturer's website and you can pick them up as well. Now, one important difference just while we're on that subject, uh, Fnatic do only sell direct to public. So you do have to go through their website to purchase their gear. Uh, we'll be comparing quite a bit today against some Mozza hardware. So it's important that you guys know that they do sell directly to the customer. But they also have a well-established reseller partner network now too. So we do have a few links to some of our preferred partners down in the description for you guys. But I would definitely recommend if you are looking at Mozza gear, shop around, make sure you're getting the best deal. Keep in mind that shipping and taxes can be very, very significant in the purchase price. So just make sure you're shopping around and getting yourself the absolute best deal possible. But with all that said, let's dive in now and talk about all this gear, starting with the pricing of this new CSL DD bundle. So if you follow the links in the description to the Fanatec website, you'll see there's actually a page there which is dedicated to a, a variety of different ready to race bundles that they've put together throughout a variety of different price points. So there should be something there to suit most people's needs and budget. But you'll notice that it's quite, uh, it's quite a jump in price from the bundle that we're gonna be looking at today to the next bundle up. And the reason for that is that the steering wheel that they're including with this, the P1V2 wheel, is quite a bit cheaper than the other wheels which they have available. So we'll be taking a more detailed look at the quality of this wheel today and comparing it with some other alternatives for you guys too. But to get you started here, the price for the base, the wheel, and the CSL pedals uh, comes in at at $399.95 US dollars or Euro, or if you're in Australia, $639.90. Now they do also have an option here for the same package, but with the boost kit, which boosts the output of the motor from five Newton meters up to eight Newton meters. And if you watch our full review of the CSL DD, you'll see that it is quite a significant jump up. Whether or not it's worth the price to you is a pretty subjective thing, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail today too. But if you do decide you want that eight Newton meter version, just remembering that it is only a power supply that you're purchasing, it's not any different in terms of the mechanical hardware of the wheelbase itself. So you can decide to purchase that a little bit later on. But if you decide to purchase it at the same time, you're gonna save yourself about 50 US dollars off the purchase price there as well. So the eight Newton meter version of this package comes in at 499.95 euro or US dollars or $814.80 if you're in Australia. So that pricing is extremely aggressive. In fact, it places it as the cheapest uh, direct drive wheelbase available on the market today, at least that I could find from a major manufacturer at least. If you Compared to the uh, Mozza R5 bundle, for example, which also comes with a wheel and pedals, uh, that comes in at, where is it on my sheet here? 529 US dollars or Euro or 879 Australian dollars. So more than $100 US more expensive. Now, one important thing to note there, just with the comparison between the two before we unpack it in more detail, is that the uh, R5 bundle does actually come with a table clamp as well. So if you are looking at getting all this gear set up just at your, at your gaming PC and you don't have a cockpit or anything like that, then that is definitely one point of consideration. If you're gonna buy a table clamp for the CSL DD, there is one available through Fnatic, uh, and that is gonna set you back an additional $29.95 US dollars or Euro, or $49.90 if you're in Australia. So just factor that in as well. But otherwise, on paper at least, this bundle is actually very similar 
to the Mozza R5, which uh, when we reviewed that, we said was absolutely incredible value for money. So when you consider that you're getting this for significantly cheaper than even that is, it is a very, very, very aggressive price. And honestly, I was amazed because you know, when you consider the fact that Fanatec have been out of stock perpetually for the CSL DD for so long now, obviously they're not having any trouble selling these things when they are in stock. So yeah, I really didn't expect them to be dropping the price of this thing anytime soon. So really, really good deal straight out of the gate there in my opinion. In fact, the pricing actually places this pretty much bang on right between something like a Logitech G923, which, uh, you know, we've done reviews of this and uh, is nowhere near the experience that something like this is and uh, something like the Moza R5. So yeah, very, very, very good value for money. Now, another important consideration there too is of course, customer support. So if you're buying into the Fnatic ecosystem, you will be dealing with Fnatic specifically for any customer support. That means you have to go through their website and their own support channels. If you're buying Moza, you're gonna be going through whichever reseller you happen to buy that through. So obviously I can't tell you what your experience is gonna be like with every single reseller out there. I can tell you that you should have a good experience with any of our affiliate partners that are linked down in the description. But yeah, just make sure that you're factoring customer support support here as well. But let's unpack it a little bit more now, show you exactly what you're getting for the money, what the quality is like of the wheel in particular, because this isn't something that we've had a look at before, and then do some more direct comparisons with the Mozza R5 and the G923 as well. So let's start off here by taking a more detailed look at the steering wheel offerings. Now this is a good time to talk about compatibility too and how it relates to each steering wheel. Now with Mozza, it's very straightforward simply because none of the Mozza gear is console compatible at all without a third party adapter. With Fnatic, this particular bundle is only PC compatible. Now it's important that you understand the CSL DD wheelbase itself is actually Xbox compatible. Compatibility for Xbox though comes from a security chip inside the steering wheel itself. So depending on what steering wheel you buy in the Fnatic ecosystem will determine whether or not you can use the setup with a Xbox. So as it stands now, this bundle will only work with PC. If you do then buy an Xbox compatible wheel down the line, that will mean that that entire setup does then become Xbox compatible. Now in terms of PlayStation, compatibility there actually comes from a security chip inside the wheelbase. So regardless of what steering wheel you buy, for this particular setup, it's never gonna work on PlayStation. You would actually need to go across to the GTDD Pro for compatibility then. So PC only compatibility on both sides of the table here, but with the Fnatic ecosystem, you do have that option of buying an Xbox wheel and unlocking that Xbox compatibility with this particular bundle. Now just to quickly compare with the Logitech G923 as well, there are two different versions of this particular wheel. One is PC and Xbox compatible. The other as we have here is uh, PC and PlayStation compatible. So if you're ordering one of these guys, just just make sure you're getting the right version for your particular usage case, and it's as simple as that. So onto the wheels themselves now, starting with the P1 V2 wheel from Fnatic. So this is a 300 millimeter diameter wheel, and as you can see, it is perfectly round here. Now, the thing I really like about this wheel straight out of the gate is the fact that it is such a fantastic all-rounder. So regardless of whether you're drifting, rallying, driving GT-style cars, Formula-style cars, or whatever, if you can only afford one wheel, then this is gonna have you covered for pretty much everything. So a similar kind of design philosophy to what we get with the Mozza R5 bundle and the Logitech G923 as well. But you can see both of these wheels have that flat bottom or D shape, which does make them a little bit awkward for drifting in particular. Anything where you wanna have the wheel be able to slip through your hands and grip it in any position is always gonna be a little bit more tricky with a wheel that's D shaped. So I'm a big fan of this wheel straight out of the gate as an all rounder. Another thing that I like here as well is that the buttons are relatively ergonomically placed too. So if we hold it like this, you can see I can actually reach at least the first two buttons uh, without really kind of taking my hand off the general driving position. Now in terms of buttons, we've got a single five-way switch here which gives us left, right, up, down, and push button functionality. That's really great for navigating through menus as well as the tuning menu that we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, we've got 13 push buttons on the face of the wheel here as well. Those have all got a relatively good feel to them, relatively clicky, and uh, feel pretty much the same, honestly, between the Mozza wheel and the uh, Fnatic wheel. Now, one of those buttons is for bringing up the tuning menu. What that allows you to do is uh, get a little display here up the top of the wheel, which allows you to adjust settings for your force feedback, uh, brake response, all those kinds of things on the fly directly from the wheel. And that's always been one of the big advantages of the Fnatic ecosystem, at least in my opinion. Just gives you the ability to make those on the fly changes without having to alt tab out of the game. And you can also choose between a selection of different presets here, as well as auto setup too. So if you've got different presets for different SIM titles, different cars, 
quickly change between them at the start of the race if you've forgotten without having to alt tab and potentially miss the start of the race. Now we do have the ability to make some changes on the Mozo ecosystem now, but you don't have any sort of visual reference on the wheel. So it is all kind of, you have to push a button combination and kind of just guess whether it worked or not. So definitely uh, an area of strength, I would say, on the Fnatic ecosystem over pretty much any other ecosystem that exists at least at this point in time. So in terms of the overall build quality here, I would say the Mozzle wheel is of a higher construction quality than what we have with the P1 wheel. Remembering again that the Mozza R5 bundle is more expensive than uh, the CSLD DP1 bundle is. So to start off with, we've got a rubberized plastic coating here throughout the entire surface of the wheel. So no uh, pleather or anything like that. I think the uh, I think the G923 is actually genuine leather. My old G27 still smelt like leather when I opened up the cupboard after about 10 years of usage. So I think it is genuine leather, but this definitely feels cheaper in the hands even than the Logitech wheel does. But in saying that, it certainly doesn't feel bad. The rubberized coating is quite nice. It's not horrible and sticky and tacky. So it's not gonna pick up dead skin cells and dirt and debris like uh, some very expensive wheels that use rubberized coating coatings do. So it's a, it's a good overall finish, I would say. There's no significant flex in the wheel rim itself either, which is really good. That can't be said for the quick release though, which we'll talk about in just a second. But looking at the wheel, you can see it's got this kind of faux carbon fiber finish on the front here, which is actually pretty genuine looking, but it isn't genuine carbon fiber. It is just a kind of etched plastic finish. And all throughout here, the entire wheel is plastic in construction. Whereas if we look at the Mozza ES wheel by comparison, we've got the faux leather wrapping around with the nice stitching. It is a plastic shroud on the back, but the wheel rim itself, as you can see through here is a brushed anodized aluminium. So this definitely does have a higher quality overall feel. The shifters I would say are actually a little bit nicer on the P1 wheel in fact. On the ES wheel they are quite clicky. It just kind of feels like you're activating a contact switch which is pretty much the only resistance that's being provided. Whereas with the P1 wheel it's got a much more snappy kind of feel to it. It is still plasticky overall and it's certainly not a high quality feeling shifter. But I'd say overall in terms of the quality of the shifter is pretty similar to what we have on the Logitech G923 by default. So look, overall, I'd say between the two wheels, uh, I think that this is probably the better all-rounder wheel when you're considering the fact that this is a lot easier to use for drifting and rally style driving. But there are a couple of other really important advantages to the Mozzle wheel. So first and foremost, the quality of the quick release here. Now, one of the things that I was absolutely thrilled about with the cheaper R5 bundle and the cheaper ES wheel is that they're still using a high quality aluminum quick release. Now you guys have heard me say a million times by now in these videos that the NRG style quick release that Mozza, Simmagic, and a couple of other manufacturers are now using is in my opinion, the best OEM at least quick release that we have on the market available today. And this is far, far better than even the Club Sport QR1 in the Fnatic ecosystem. Now, Fnatic have been talking about their QR2 quick release, which should solve a lot of the issues that we'll talk about in just a minute with their quick release mechanism. But at this point, at least in time, we haven't actually seen any more news on that. We don't know exactly when it's gonna be releasing. So we can't really use that as a point of advantage of the Fnatic ecosystem, but we definitely will be covering that in detail as soon as we can possibly get our hands on it to let you know what kind of difference that makes. But the complaints with the uh, Fnatic quick releases are, when you look at the cheaper wheels like the P1 V2, it's using their simplified quick release. Now, this slots onto the stem of the wheelbase and then locks into position by rotating the collar like so. And unfortunately, these quick releases do still have quite a lot of flex in them. So if you rock the wheel from side to side, you can notice quite a bit of flex there. Now, a lot of people say they don't notice it when they're driving, but look, in all honesty, at least with the simplified quick release, it's definitely something that I do notice. If you step up to the more expensive metal quick release like the uh, one that we have here on the McLaren's GT3 wheel. And this is an optional upgrade for this wheel. We'll talk about this wheel in more detail a little later too. That does away with a lot of the flex that you get inherent in the plastic design on the simplified quick release. But unfortunately, because the machining tolerances between the sleeve here and the stem on the motor side are a little bit looser than they need to be, you do end up with a little bit of play there and it can end up with some clunking and horrible metallic sounds when you're driving. And that's been a complaint that people have had about the Fnatic quick releases for quite some time now, myself included. And that goes for their entry level stuff all the way through to their most expensive stuff too. So definitely the quick release is a big advantage, at least at the moment, to the Mozza ecosystem over any of the Fnatic wheels that are available at this point in time. Hopefully the QR2 uh, quick release will improve that significantly. The other big advantage that you have here with the Mozza wheel as well is that there are wheel mods available. Now you can see here how the button plate is kind of cut out and that allows you to just undo 
the uh, six bolts around the top here and you can actually swap out for different style wheels without having to change the quick release and the button plate and all those bits and pieces. The shifters remain the same and everything. Now, the thing I really like about this is it gives you a really simple and cheap way to switch between different driving styles. It is a little bit cumbersome to take the bolts out. It's not something you're gonna wanna do every five minutes, but these wheel mods are only 39 US dollars or euros or 65 Australian dollars. So obviously that is a lot cheaper than having to go out and buy a formula style wheel in addition to this wheel for the Fnatic ecosystem. Now the cheapest alternative that Fnatic have to a wheel of this style is actually their McLaren GT3 wheel that we're looking at just a moment ago. Now this is in my opinion one of the best value for money sim racing wheels available on the market, but it does still cost $199.95 US dollars or Euro or $349.99 Australian dollars, which is a lot more expensive than uh, just switching this over with a 30 or $50 mod like this guy is. So that is one very clever design choice in the Mozza ecosystem, at least in my opinion. Now, the other thing you'll notice here as well is that the diameter of the Mozza wheel is significantly smaller than the P1V2 as well. So 280 millimeter over here compared to the 300 millimeter that we get with the Fnatic P1. So what this means is for formula style driving, they can be a little bit easier to drive with a smaller diameter wheel, uh, simply because everything feels a little bit more responsive and a little bit more twitchy. But if you're driving something like a GT4, GT3, or anything bigger than that, then this kind of diameter starts to become a little bit too small. And something like the 300 mil that we have here with the P1 becomes a little bit more suitable. So when you break it down, the difference is the larger the diameter and the lower the rotating mass of the wheel, these wheels are both pretty similar in weight actually, but the larger the diameter, the more dampening effect it has and the more leverage you have against the force feedback overall. So it makes the force feedback feel weaker than it does with a smaller wheel, but it also dampens it down a little bit too. So it makes it feel a little bit less snappy. And again, depending on the type of car you're driving will uh, determine whether that's something that's desirable or not. But for me personally, I find that 300 millimeters is kind of the best for an all round wheel for something that you're gonna be using for everything from formula style driving all the way through to rally and drift, for example. Whereas I definitely wouldn't wanna be drifting or rallying on a wheel that's only 280 millimeters. So that is definitely a consideration there. There are a couple of other wheel mods available for the ES wheel too, which we don't unfortunately have here. I think there's one that's the 320 millimeter diameter, uh, but definitely check their website for all the details on those. But overall, if it comes down to just having one wheel that you're gonna use for everything, then I do think that the P1V2 is probably the better option overall. So before we move on to the wheelbases, one other important consideration here too is the wider ecosystems available. So with the Fnatic ecosystem, you have a huge selection of wheels all the way through from something like the McLaren GT3 wheel, which we already talked about, to something like the 1500 US dollar uh, M4 GT3 wheel, which you can see is absolutely beautiful uh, carbon fiber finish beautiful quality shifters, high quality buttons, and all those things. So there's a huge variety of different wheels within the Fnatic ecosystem everywhere between something like that and something like this. And we have a complete guide, actually two videos dedicated to this, as well as a, a, a article on our website. So I'll drop some links below for that as well. Everything for, from formula style all the way through GT3 style, even rally cars and NASCARs, they got pretty much everything. A lot more limited in the Mozo ecosystem at the moment, but it is something that they're rapidly expanding. They actually have a new uh, formula formula style wheel coming in at a cheaper price point than their current GS wheel, which we're gonna be reviewing very soon here on the channel too. So definitely keep an eye out for that one. But at the moment, Fnatic do win in terms of the overall ecosystem and the abundance of choice available when it comes to wheels. But anyway, let's put the wheels aside now and move across into comparing the wheelbases. So this is gonna be a lot quicker than looking at the wheels was because it's pretty simple to unpack here. So with the Logitech, which is the cheapest of the bunch here, although not a whole lot cheaper, it's gotta be said than this new bundle from Fnatic. You've got a cog driven wheelbase here. Now there's a couple of very, very big disadvantage, well three major disadvantages here when it comes to a cog driven system like the one we have here. The first one is that this is extremely noisy. Anybody that's used a cog driven Logitech wheelbase would know that these things rattle and uh, they're extremely loud to the point where often you can't race if there's somebody trying to study or sleep in a room next door to you. Now if you compare that with pretty much any direct drive wheelbase, whether it's Mozza, Fnatic, Sim Magic, anything, they're all pretty much silent in their operation. You get a little 
little bit of magnetic resonance sometimes, but certainly not anything that's gonna be distracting or annoying to anybody else anywhere near you. So that is one very, very big consideration. Uh, with the G923 also, we're limited to about two and a half Newton meters of peak torque, whereas both of these are five Newton meters, so twice the strength there, up to more than three times the strength if you end up getting the boost pack for the CSL DD, so that is worth considering too. But really the biggest difference in terms of the actual driving experience is just the level of detail that you're getting with direct drive. I can't overstate enough just how much difference this makes overall. Now that's not to say that you can't drive quickly and consistently with something like a cog driven wheelbase, but the huge difference here is just the level of granular detail that you get with direct drive as opposed to cog driven. So with direct drive, if you're not aware, it's essentially exactly as it's described. So you've got a motor which is directly connected to the shaft, which the steering wheel is then connected to. So there's no gear lash, there's no pulleys or belts or anything like that, which are gonna add any dampening effect. Literally what the motor is doing is exactly what you feel through your hands. Now in the early days of direct drive, that wasn't necessarily always advantageous because there was quite a bit of robotic feel that would come through. And even with the CSL DD, with our initial testing, it wasn't quite as smooth as we would have hoped that it would have been. They have thankfully smoothen things up a lot in the time since we did the initial review. But if you compare both of these guys to something like a G923, they're both gonna feel a heck of a lot smoother overall. They're gonna give you a lot more detail. And what that translates to in the real world in, in terms of actually driving quickly and consistently, and this is something that I see a lot of people comment on when they move across to direct drive, is just the ability to catch those quick little slides in the car. A lot of people are very, very quick with the G923, but as soon as the car gets out of shape or as soon as something happens that throws them a little bit out of control, they struggle to catch that slide again. Whereas with direct drive, everything feels that little bit more instinctive. So that's the big differences there. And look, I mean, obviously, if, if all you can afford is something like the G923 and it gets you up and racing, then absolutely go out and buy one. So yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the G923, but the experience is gonna be far and away superior with either one of these two guys. So let's move this guy out of the way now and talk about the differences between these two a little bit more. Now, straight away on the table here, you can see the uh, form factor and footprint of the R5 is significantly smaller than what we have with the CSL DD. Again, you can check out our detailed reviews of both of these for all the dimensions and comparisons, weights and things like that. But that is significant to a lot of people. Uh, depending on how you have your rig set up, you might wanna have the monitor really up close behind the wheelbase, or you might wanna have something that's really low profile that doesn't stick up high behind the wheel. So both of these are pretty small, but you do have a little bit more flexibility with mounting on the R5 if that's something that's important to you. While we're on the subject of mounting, you do have a little bit more versatility with the Fnatic wheelbase. You can see there's actually some T-slots very cleverly disguised within the heatsink fins here on both sides of the wheelbase. So you can side mount or bottom mount with T-nuts which come provided for the bottom channels here. With the Mozza wheelbase, you can see there aren't any mounting channels on the sides and because it's not a flat profile on the edge, it does make it quite difficult to side mount. You're left with just the four mounting holes on the bottom of the R5 to get that guy mounted. Now, I don't think that that's gonna be a huge, uh, a huge determining factor in an overall purchasing decision, but just something that I do think that you guys need to be aware of. And then in terms of overall build quality, look, there's not a whole lot of difference between the two of them. Both of them have a plastic cover on the back here. The Mozza one does have a metal cover on the front. Uh, as we already talked about, the quick release on the Mozza ecosystem is far superior to the QR1 from the Fnatic ecosystem. As you mentioned, there is the QR2 coming very soon, so we'll definitely be commenting on that as soon as we possibly can. But look, in terms of the actual drive experience between the two of them, there's not a whole lot in it. Both of them are pretty smooth these days. I would say initially the R5 was maybe just a touch smoother than what you have with the Fnatic CSL DD, but the later firmware updates on this have smoothened it up quite a bit more now. And I'd say it's at the point now where it's pretty much indistinguishable between the two of them under normal kind of driving conditions. If you're sitting there in the pits and you're really kind of paying attention and going, oh yeah, I can feel this, I can feel that, maybe you'll feel a difference. But when you're actually out there driving on the track, there's very, very little between them. Just do keep in mind that of course, the CSL DD does have the ability to upgrade to eight Newton meters of torque with that boost pack that we talked about before. Whereas the R5 is limited to five Newton meters. There's no way to boost that up beyond that unless you upgrade the wheelbase to something like the R9, which which is significantly more expensive. The last thing I just wanna to quickly touch on here with the driving experience too is just some of the differences between the software. Now again, we do have detailed videos taking you through the entire software suite for both of these products. So I'm only gonna just kind of skim over this now. Uh, Mozza have honestly really impressed me with how quickly they've been evolving their software over time. Uh, one of the frustrations that I do have with Mozza still to this day though, is that there are a lot of quirky little uh, glitches that happen from time to time. To give you the example, just the other day, I uh, upgraded the firmware on my 
my R9 wheelbase and suddenly found that the shifters on my GS wheel wouldn't work. So I had to go and find a different wheel that uh, did work. I updated the firmware on the wheel too and it didn't fix it. Uh, you know, just finding little glitches like that that happen from time to time. They seem to be updating their software pretty much weekly at this point and has been the case for you know the pretty much the entire time that we've been uh, that we've been looking at Mozart products. So yeah, it, do, it does feel a little bit rough and ready sometimes around the edges. I think that sometimes they might just need to slow down a little bit and just focus more on the quality of the output rather than just expanding the ecosystem so quickly. But look, having said that, it has evolved greatly over time. So I would still say that in the software department though, Fnatic does still have that slight advantage just in terms of ease of use, uh, integration in a variety of different sim racing titles too. I do find that uh, one of the big advantages with the Fnatic ecosystem is that force feedback does feel quite consistent between the different sim racing titles, whereas with Mozza, they do still have a little way to go there with that consistency. Fnatic have also made a lot of improvements to their profile system recently too. So if you download their Fanalab software, you you can actually uh, have profiles automatically load for different cars and different sims to get you up and running and uh, give you a good overall driving feel. So ease of use is a little bit better with the Fnatic ecosystem too. Remembering again, we also do have that tuning menu that allows you to make those on the fly adjustments too, which is a little bit cleaner once again on the Fnatic ecosystem. The other thing I would comment on there as well is that Mozza does just need a little bit more work in terms of the filtering that's necessary to get a smooth overall feel. Uh, you know, just filtering out things like oscillation in the wheel and deep details like that is a little bit more tricky on the Mozza stuff. And what that ultimately means is the more filtering you're running, the more you're dampening down that overall force feedback intensity and you know just feeling those granular details in the force feedback. So I find that you get a little bit more of a direct feel with the Fnatic ecosystem than you do with Mozza, unless you make the sacrifice of a little bit of a robotic feel with the Mozza wheel. But I am really nitpicking here. I think ultimately you're gonna be happy with either one of these. Just again, keeping in mind that the quick release on the Mozza ecosystem is superior to the QR1 on the Fnatic ecosystem. So, you know, if you're worried about flex in the wheel and things like that, things feeling really solid on the rig, then at least at this point in time, the Mozza is probably the better choice for you. So on to pedals now. So Fnatic has their CSL pedals at this price point included in the bundle. Mozza includes their uh, SRP light pedals with the R5 bundle. Now you don't have to buy the bundle, you can buy the R5 base separately and uh, choose different pedals if you wish to do so. Again, check out our Mozza Buyers Guide linked down in the description for all of the details on this. But look, I mean, straight away on the table here, I don't need to tell you guys, you can see that they're pretty much identical in terms of their overall design. Both of them allow you to move the pedals in and out from side to side to get the spacing exactly right. Both of them do have a clutch pedal option available too if you wish to purchase that. Uh, basically with the Fnatic one, you can either buy a dedicated clutch pedal or buy the load cell brake upgrade, which then turns the existing brake into the clutch pedals. So you just remove the little foam insert out of the back and you're good to go. Now I should also mention here the pedals that come bundled with the G923 are actually a significant improvement over what was included with their previous models. I know they look identical, but they did actually do quite a bit of work to the uh, feel of the brake pedal. And it does have a more progressive and uh, more defined kind of pressure point in the brake pedal now. So I actually do prefer the G923 brake pedal over the SRP light pedals. And I'd say it's probably about on par with the uh, CSL pedal, the default uh, configuration if you don't go up to load cell. So if I quickly spin the pedal around here, you can see in the case of the throttle pedal, it's just a basic push in. You can see there's a little spring in the back there and there's also a Hall Effect sensor there as well. So there's no mechanical moving parts involved in the electronics that could wear out and uh, cause issues over time, which is a great thing. Uh, if you look over at the brake pedal, you can see same design, but we have this assembly here with a little foam insert. And that just adds a little bit of resistance here to the brake pedal to give you that more progressive feel. Now, the important thing when it comes to braking is to have that clearly defined pressure point where you can push to that threshold consistently to give you your threshold braking and then modulate around it and uh, taper off for your uh, for your trail braking. So that is very important. Now, the thing that I really didn't like about the SRP light pedal is that they didn't have anything like that by default. So what we have here is their performance kit upgrade. That comes in at uh, 29 euro or US dollars or $33.90. And I would say this is an absolutely essential upgrade for these pedals. What that does is uh, give you that, again, clearly defined pressure point that you can modulate around. Otherwise, literally it feels exactly the same as the throttle pedal. 
well does. And the problem there being that you just don't have any way to establish proper pressure-based or force-based muscle memory. It's purely just gonna be down to the position of your ankle. So you will find that you'll be able to drive a lot more quickly and consistently with this upgrade. One thing to just keep in mind there though, is that with that upgrade, the pedals do tend to slide around on the floor if you don't have a solid mount for them. So with both of these pedals, they're actually all three of these sets of pedals, they are designed to be able to mount on the carpet or just sitting on a tile floor and there's enough resistance there that they don't slide around underneath you. Uh, you will want to make sure that your chair's not going to slide back every single time you press the brake pedal, of course. But if you do upgrade to this guy here, all the load cell in the Fnatic ecosystem, then you will want to have some way to mount your chair and make sure the pedals aren't sliding across the floor. Even just having them hard up against the wall or having a block of wood behind them and then up against the wall so they don't move around is generally sufficient. So I'm not saying you need to rush out and buy a cockpit or anything like that, but just keep in mind it's not going to be quite as plug and play as what you get with the uh, with the default setup. So when you break it down between the two sets of pedals we have on the table here, I'd say there probably isn't any significant reason to sway me in either direction to either ecosystem. I'd say it's gonna be more down to the driving experiences, the wheelbases and the wheels themselves. Uh, one thing I will say though, is that I'm not a big fan of any of the current uh, Mozza sim racing pedals that are available on the market, even up to the CRP pedals, which are very expensive, I think, for what they are. They do look really nice, but they're very complex to adjust and they just don't have the same level of overall quality and feel in terms of the driving experience as some of the Fnatic options that are available. My uh, actual pick for the best value sim racing pedals on the market at this point in time is the Fnatic uh, CSL Elite V2 pedals. I just think they're absolutely fantastic. And again, full review linked in the description down below, which will take you through all the reasons why I'm such a big fan of those pedals. So if you're keeping, uh, if you're keeping upgrades in mind and you're wanting to stay within the same ecosystem, then maybe that is a reason to stick with Fnatic. Uh, you do just have a little bit more of a clear upgrade path there with better value when it comes to pedals. Again, remember, Remembering as well, if you are wanting to run on console with a uh, with an Xbox compatible wheel later on with the Fnatic ecosystem, you will need to have the pedals connected through the wheelbase. Now, of course, if you're running on PC, that doesn't really matter because you can just plug any pedal set you want in via USB. But if you are wanting to run the Fnatic ecosystem with an Xbox compatible wheel on an Xbox, then you will be limited to only using Fnatic pedals. And there's just simply better options at a cheaper price available there than what we have with Mozza. Again, remembering that Mozza doesn't work with console without a third party adapter anyway. So you're kind of stuck there. But yeah, if you're on PC, then uh, not really a significant uh, swaying determining factor in either direction when it comes to the pedals. So how do we best summarize all this? I think, I think there are strengths and weaknesses on both sides of the table here. I think when you consider the fact that this bundle is this bundle from Fnatic is significantly cheaper than the R5 bundle is from Mozza and the strength of their ecosystem overall, the quality of the integration across different sim racing titles as well is that little bit better with Fnatic than it is with Mozza, although Mozza are catching up very quickly. But then you also have the drawback of the uh, the quick release on the Fnatic ecosystem just being nowhere near as good as it is on the Mozza. I think. You know, for me, I probably would go with the Fnatic over the Mozart ecosystem at this price point simply because it is cheaper. The wobble and the flex in the quick release isn't something that I tend to really notice when I'm driving unless I'm specifically paying attention to it. It might be something that absolutely drives you insane. And again, if you're, if you're worried about that, I would definitely recommend going and have a look at our more detailed full reviews of both of these ecosystems that will give you a much better picture overall of what you're in for if you decide to go down either one of these paths. But I think at the price point, it is very difficult to go past this Fnatic bundle as an entry to direct drive sim racing at this point in time. I think it is absolutely fantastic value for money. And when you consider just how close it is in price to something like a G923, which, you know, while the pedals are, you know, pretty same, same, the quality of the overall driving experience and what direct drive specifically brings to the table in regards to that is undeniable. And when you consider the number of different wheels and upgrade parts that we have available there too, I think that this is an absolutely fantastic value proposition for anybody looking to step up into sim racing. But I also think if you were to go down the path of the Mozart R5 bundle, you'd be absolutely happy. But if one of my mates was to ring me up and say, hey, Will, should I get this or should I get this? I've got to say, I would go with this. So I really hope that today's video has helped you out, guys. Uh, if you do want to pick up any of the gear you've seen in today's video, there will be links down in the description as well as links to our full reviews as we've referenced throughout today's video. But I really hope that this has helped you out. Leave a thumbs up if it has, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.